Hello, everyone. A very good evening to all of you. Um, are you able to hear me? Is the video, audio, everything clear? Could you please give me a confirmation on chat? Great. Absolutely great. Thank you so much. And very happy to be back with you for another session of Odin Talks. And we're going to have a lot of interesting conversation today. Um, could I request our speaker, our guest for today, Saurabh Ray, to um, please come on camera so we can start the session? Hey, hi. Good evening. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I was really packed with certain office meetings. That's fine. We thought, um, all right. Saurabh, welcome and thank you very much for being here today. Um, Saurabh is a data scientist with uh, IBM and before that he's worked in um, different data scientist positions with different companies. Uh, Saurabh, I'll let you introduce yourself a little more in detail, but what actually struck me in your profile is that you started out with mechanical engineering, right? You did your engineering uh, in mechanical and then you had a transition into data sciences. The reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people in our audience today kind of come with a similar non-IT background, right? And for many of them, this is their first experience with IT. So please take us through your journey a little bit and uh, please help us understand how you made this transition. And in that context, we will discuss a lot of other things over the next one hour. Over to you, please. Okay. So thank you, Shruti, and hello, everyone. Fine. Uh, I was not aware that this discussion will come up, but since it has come up, I'll be very honest with you, okay? So... I was mostly inclined with computers right, let's say, from a high school. So I wanted to take up computer, but it's that I have an elder sister. She is three years older than me, and she's a geek in computers, okay? And my parents really did not want it that we have two computer engineers in the same house. And my father has a soft corner for mechanical engineering, and he is into PSU. He's just retired, and he feels that mechanical is called the evergreen branch. So once you become a mechanical engineer, you actually can do anything and everything in life. So that's how the thought process was. And to be honest, I really don't have to share the same view. But then it was fine. Uh, it is pretty normal in Indian households that we really don't take early decisions in career. It's slowly and steadily when we start step, stepping outside the households. We study, but even after studying, we really don't know what we want to do in life. And then, to be honest, I see people with five, six years of experience, even they're confused. Are they doing the right track or do they take, need to take a pivot in the career? So for me, taking a mechanical was more of my father's wish. I really wanted to pursue computer engineering. But then uh, again, I really love cars. So in mechanical, I decided let's specialize in automotive. So I have been involved in multiple projects right from my college days. And... Uh, not sure if you guys have heard about it, but there are certain societies inside India and the term is called SAE India Kit. So in SAE India, you basically create Formula 1 cars. So in my college, right from the second year, third year and fourth year, I ended up uh, building two combustion engine F1 cars and one electric engine F1 cars. So it was a team effort, obviously, but then that was an interest. But while the time the placements started coming, the company started coming, you get a reality check that... Design is something which you might still get an opportunity in India, but to work on an r and department in automotive, the industry right now is grooming up, but then in 2016, 2017, it was not that strong. So the field which was in, I was rather more intrigued in, we did not have that many opportunities. But then that's where, you know, your thought process really plays well. What happens in when you build up a car or let's say in any mechanical field you take up, it's not going to be only mechanical, mechanical, which you do. it's going to be a combination of multiple things. So it was a part where we had innovated a solution. It's very common in today's date, but I'm talking about 2015. It was a new concept where paddle shifters and switch shifters were not very common in cars. We had this manual gears only for transmission. So to do that, there are certain ECU boards. You have to know a certain bit of coding. And only once the electrical circuits are connected with the hardware, you go up and end up creating an automotive vehicle. So that way, I was actually always involved in some way or the other in coding. Although my graduation degree will not say computer engineering, but it was not that I was away from code. So in a nutshell, if I have to say somebody is nowhere near coding, 
you don't become a data scientist in one year that is a trick okay there will be courses there will be platforms which say that in 6 months you can become full stack data scientist that is not true in 6 months yes you get awareness what is python or let's say what are some coding structures what are certain concepts but it's a journey you will have to invest certain amount of period of time you have to be gritty enough there will be challenges in my time data science was just a buzzword clients were not really ready to take up artificial intelligence solutions it was more about a legacy application solution time c++ java even in today's day it's not that these languages have gone away but they were in their peak javascript was in its peak ml was really not in its peak it was early days and hence getting into an ai career was not that difficult or a challenging experience today's day ai is selling like hot pancakes you see every other day what is the trend right now i'll use the term chat gpt or large language model unfortunately the word is selling so quickly that people don't understand that before that there is a big journey which you have to make you have to understand what are oops concept you have to understand what is python programming you have to understand statistics there is machine learning there are graphs if you understand you have to understand an architecture of deep learning what is convolution what is recurrent neural network there are so many stuffs there which are piling back in the backlog so just because chat gpt is the market does not mean that you go ahead and take up that okay fine i'll only work in large language model it's a journey so it's just that let's say you are 18 you are ap- applying for your license you don't get to become an f1 racer in the next month you'll have to give it some time you have to understand how the traffic rules are you'll have to understand how do i really make my way out of it so right. the journey is long so for me i was involved with coding although i was pursuing mechanicals i was involved in coding and then when recruitment happened uh again mechanicals industry it was not that i did not have an offer but the pay parity was a bit lower compared to what it was in it industry i'll be honest it was just the compensation structure till that point of time i was not confident that i'll be taking data science as my career so i signed up with accenture to start my career with and even there i was not a data scientist from day one okay so once you get hired and you are a trainee it's it's not intern but you are always a full time employee but then the term is trainee for the first 2 to 3 months so the first technology which came to me as an opportunity was dotnet i started my career with dotnet i had to work with c sharp as a language there were multiple concepts which you worked upon and in 2 to 3 months once the training period was completed there is an application or rather a product of microsoft just dynamic 365 applications in crm so there is power bi there is crm so that was what my first project was which was around a period of 6 months but in that process the luxury which you get in such big tech organization i'll not say even accenture not in today's day it's way bigger than what it was when i started my career but still in service based organizations you are allowed to explore if you have a mindset to innovate if you have a mindset of research then you are allowed to explore different corners and come up with good innovative solutions so that's how my transition happened so from mechanical i chose an it software company pay parity was the reason from there dotnet was my first training from dotnet it was microsoft applications and then within that space the product which was selling like hot pancakes at that point of time was dialog play okay so i think it was called api.ai in the beginning of years and then it was named as dialog flow which is basically a easy way of creating a chatbot it was more like a ui in which you understand what are terms like context how do you map words how do you understand those meanings and eventually the idea is to build a chat so it was very interesting the thought is don't try to choose a career because you think that that market is good for this career or tomorrow i'll get a very good salary out of this career what is important is are you interested if you are interested you will make a way out of it but it's just that it's a job for you it's boring but it's a giving you a good pay then eventually 5 years 10 years down the line once you become a senior executive just because you are not interested in it you don't have your heart in it it will be difficult for you to grow up the ladder so in your first 6 to 8 months whenever you do any transition or any career the question is do you really enjoy it in today's day the common term outside is it industry mein bahut khichkich hota hai so there is too much peer pressure 
बॉस का ये खटखट होता है नो दीज आर नॉट ट्रू टर्म्स ट्रस्ट मी आई एम वेरी हैप्पी विद माई जॉब जस्ट बिफोर आई केम टू दिस पॉडकास्ट आई हैड बैक टू बैक मीटिंग आई एम नॉट ट्रस्टेड विद दैट बिकॉज इट वॉज गुड डिस्कशन इट वॉज हेल्थी डिस्कशन इन विच वी एंजॉय डूइंग इट Right. On the contrary, if there is someone who is not enjoying it, you give them relax. It don't matter. At the end of the day, I don't really feel that my day is over. I really don't make right. it. It doesn't matter to me. Good for me. What really matters is, am I really doing the right thing? So the answer to anybody who is looking for a transition is: before you do that transition, make sure that you are well aware what you are doing. You like doing it. it's not because of money it should not be because of market awareness you can excel in any career given you are interested in it okay correct so That's overall that is how my journey started and right now i am a full fledged data scientist great great to know uh, of this this question is for all the students here right how many of you can actually relate to what saurabh just said how does it ring a bell can you kind of relate to what he said because i know most of you are you know in the same boat yes and that was very encouraging sort of you know we we all understand that it takes time you know to reach a level where uh, reach a kind of level that you have reached but i think it all it all begins with starting somewhere correct you've got to start somewhere if you're if you want if you've decided that you want to have a transition that it is important that you get on to the track first probably it might take a year or two for you to get there exactly. but then making up that mind you know that itself is a big decision and uh, you made it you're doing very well and all the close to 300 400 people who are there in the room have also made that decision and that is uh, very very motivating for us um yeah, that's great. so coming coming back to what we were talking about right we we decided we'll discuss on the difference between practical and theoretical yeah. aspects of artificial intelligence Uh, but before we get into artificial intelligence can you help explain the difference between artificial intelligence machine learning data science we have heard, we have asked multiple people this question each person has their own interpretation of it and it's always interesting to understand what these perspectives are so ai versus ml versus data science or is versus even the right word because i don't think they're very different it's but it's not what? it's not versus it's basically a big circle inside which you have a small bubble inside which you have a even small bubble okay so data scientists or data science data science is basically anything it's not necessary ai ml it's anything in which you are dealing with data sets not necessarily large data sets can be any data set you are dealing with data set with an objective that i want to bring out certain impeccable insights out of it i want to bring out certain information which this data wants to speak to us but a layman using those numbers can't do it so it can be in the form of charts it can be in the form of relationships it can be in the form of plots it can be in the form of models it can be that anything and when i say data set it does not mean it has to be a table it does not mean that it has to be let's say an excel sheet it can be images it can be audio it can be video it can be waveforms it can be a live cctv footage it can be anything everything is data so the world where you explore data is data science now inside data science there are any many methodologies by which we drive certain solutions data engineering is the way in which you are just doing some wrangling operations with your data so let's say you want to create some your multiple tables you want to make a join out of it and you want to bring out certain pattern out of it that is also data engineering you want to clean some data and bring some valuable insight out of it that is also data engineering but on top of it once you think that i have got some benchmark or let's say i have a platform and now i want to bring a predictive solution out of it that's where modeling starts so when we go with modeling machine learning is one approach in which again i don't want to go to the technical bit there but you have your supervised cluster you have unsupervised there are different methodologies but machine learning is basically we are using those data and then putting it inside a mathematical function to get a desired output that is ml for you but when we say ai ai is a big family inside machine learning there can inside sorry inside ai you have machine learning then let's say your data is very very complex you are not able to explain the relationship in a simple way let's say you want to bring some non linear component out of it what would you do you would write start creating different layers you would go to deep learning architecture you would start using the term activation function why do we use it because now 
I want non-linearity so that I can use, let's say, a very complex function to explain that my target. So AI is basically ML plus deep learning plus NLP plus reinforcement learning. Your LLMs, Chat GPT, Transformers, Bert, everything is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the bigger family, and machine learning is a part of AI. We cannot say it's versus. Everything is relevant, and when you are aware of all the tech stack. you know what is different way of modeling you understand data wrangling operation you know how to write an architecture you know how to deploy your solutions then you call yourself a complete data scientist great so for someone who wants to work in the field of ai uh, what is a good place to start very tricky question actually and uh, you will have to be open first thing you have to be you know should know what you are aware of it's not necessary everybody knows everything it's not mandatory forget the jds forget what hrs are asking they will put everything which is there in the market and they'll say you'll have these many years of experience in few years you might see hrs putting in let's not use hrs but you will see job descriptions where people will expect that you are an expert in chat gpt with 7 years of experience when it has not been there in the market also this has happened not with chat gpt some other tools okay first thing which is important is you should know what is your strength whatever is your strength every mark every thing has a place in its own market okay i really don't want to take things away uh, but to be honest in today's day there are many tools you don't need to know coding to do these stuff okay. don't try to use that part don't choose that part it may be possible that you know a plethora of technologies and tomorrow you might not get an opportunity to use hardcore coding because these tools and solutions are coming in but that does not mean that you will run away from the technology bit those tools are here to stay for maybe couple of years and then few years later one tool will be replaced by some other tool but if you have core concepts of python you know statistics well you know what is modeling what is happening in the so let's say a simple linear regression model only it's using something called an equation of y equals mx plus b so if you know the complete explainability out of it you will always remain relevant so i will not say that machine learning is good or reinforcement learning is good or llms are good everything has its own value what is good for you is what is your best strength you have to start with a place you have to take one step at a time this is my first place and then take up a role okay take up a relevant role while you are working keep up skill so okay. i started my career 7 8 years ago llm was did not exist at that point of time or maybe few people were researching i was not there so in today's that i cannot be an expert in llm but does that mean that i don't know llm i'm still using llm in some way or the other i'm consuming it how with my daily drive even i am learning after having n number of years of experience being a speaker in multiple platforms does not make me a subject matter expert of everything i still have to learn to be so even if today let's say you are trained in some technology that does not mean for 5 years later you will say that i'll not learn anything you will have to be open to learning when you are in a field where research is important ai is in a field where every year you will see some form of innovation now obviously you will have a section of people in the society who will be saying that we don't support ai we are against it these are its cons we are giving our lives control to a model there will be contradicting views maybe they are correct in their place maybe not i don't want to go into that debate but the point is even 4 years ago people had said that ml is not going to survive for many years it's just a wave it will go away ml is there a new wave has come on top of it so these things are here to stay it's not going away anywhere but it will get refreshed there are n number of organizations who are putting tremendous amount of money and architecture into driving out competitive solutions tomorrow you will see augmented reality and virtual reality getting integrated with ai solutions it's already in in place we, we have already seen how iot has been integrated with data there is going to be a time when quantum quantum is a term which not many people are aware of it's very complex and it might not have too many use cases today but give it 5 years give it 10 years you will see quantum being another word being used blockchain came it's still there might not have taken up pace what ai has taken but these things are working hand in hand because these are cutting edge technology so for you what is important is you have to choose one topic and you have to be a master of it crack an interview get a role then when you are in that role build on top of it so don't think that if in today's day let's say deep learning job openings are 
70 percent and machine learning is 20 percent and your strength is machine learning just because the market is probably more inclined towards deep learning and it's not your strength you should not jump to deep learning try to pick up a role in ml only it will be a bit more difficult but it will be more valuable for you because you are well aware of it so once you have got into a role you have to perform there there's no other alternative so if you're not technically sound there it will be difficult for you to survive even because five years ago they, we did not have too many data scientists it was a niche skill you know companies used to give additional top of bonus every quarterly if you are having those skills today it's not the case today we have many opportunities if there is one position there are at least 100 applicants at that point of time there used to be 10 applicants and there was around six to seven positions so the number of openings to the ratio of applicants was pretty less earlier what it is compared to today so it's a much competitive world so in this world it is very very essential that your strength becomes your entry point not what is going on in the market or what is going to give me a better pay right um just one question at this point there are some questions coming in um okay. it's relevant at this point people want to know because you use the term llm could you just explain that a little bit what is llm okay okay i'll explain it in a very simple way because i don't expect that you people are technically aware of what llm is the full form is large language model okay so i hope that you all are aware of chatbot okay so let's go two to three years ago what was a chatbot these are like support bots. Even you go to Flipkart, you will or Mintra, you will see these applications where you have certain questions, and for that question, there are some pre-trained answers for it. Okay, but these are a bit static in nature. You will see at some point of time, or even Swiggy. My recent experience. I mean, yesterday only I was speaking with the Swiggy bot. After a period of time, if your concern is something which has not been trained earlier, what will happen? It will say, "Let me connect you to a human instead of speaking with a bot." So that was chatbot for you. But now what has happened with large language models? With large language models, this corpus, so we need to know that when you create data, oh, sorry, when we create model, we need data for it. So we are talking about language, so it has to be textual data. When I say large language model, there is a plethora of textual data which is there. And every data is been trained in such a way that there is a context and there is a meaning associated with it. So the final product of an LLM model is expected to be a human-like situation in which what usually happens in a chatbot is let's say after seven or eight iterations, you have defined a step flow. Once those steps are completed, it will come to the end of this conversation. These are open-ended. They understand what you're speaking like your human brain and they answer your queries. Till it is not matured, the most common product today's date is ChatGPT. Part is also there in a beta phase. And for people who are not paying it, you see this message that whatever I am answering, I am answering up to my knowledge till 2021. Really? But still, it's in a very, very good pace. In the paid version, what's now slowly coming in is that we are taking it next step ahead, where even if that answer or query is not known, I can quickly surf up the web and give you a link. But is already doing that in its beta pieces. So if you are wanting to know a solution, Try to put a question. I mean, fine, let's put this question. Should I choose machine learning or deep learning as my career? This is my experience and this is my strength. You put it in Google, what you will find? N number of Google pages coming in, certain links, some Quora blogs, and you will be confused. What should I choose? What they will do here is they are going to choose the best possible answer to your solution or give you a reference link. So how are they doing it? They are doing it with a plethora of data which are been trained. What are these data? These data are nothing but the questions which we have only put to Google, which Bard is doing in the last 10, 20, 30 years. They always have your data, your search history, your questions, everything, possible answers, the upvote clicks which has been put in Quora. So we understand that, okay, fine, there is a reward. That means these, this answer is more relevant to me. So hence, I will be training everything. So when I say large language model, you cannot even imagine the amount of training which has gone into these data. Tomorrow, what will happen is you will find products out of it. So you will find it. Again, I'll go back to that example, which I spoke about Dialogflow. Dialogflow is still available. It's a it's part inside now GCP Google Cloud Platform. Earlier, it used to be completely open source. What is Dialogflow? Dialogflow is basically a place where you can create your own chatbot and you won't have to write a single line of code. 
got 80% of the bot until unless you want to create a very complex bot let's say you want to integrate your apis and everything then you might have to code otherwise without writing a single line of code you can create a chatbot and there are many other platforms like dialog similarly there are going to be architectures when we call it no code where you don't have to write a single line of code and you can create these chat gpt like llm models there are certain apps even in play store and app stores how are they doing it these apis are exposed so in a nutshell understand it's a way in which language has been trained to a model but open ended questions are being answered it's not defined that only these many queries i can answer it can answer any question great great thanks for that um so now let's come to what we are <clears throat> actually the difference between theoretical ai and practical ai how would you explain that okay fine see what is theoretical ml or theoretical ai you all are doing okay what is this Uh, you've got a CSV file. Okay, you have a problem statement. I know what is my target. I will go ahead and create, let's say, a machine learning model, maybe a logistic regression or a KNN model. I know my re recall score. Okay, I might even know what matrix should I choose. I know what is my recall score. I will try to improve it. I might be doing certain hyperparameter tuning, and I've got a good bot. So this is what most learners do in the learning phase. Do you really think that this is what you will do when you get a job? not at all the first thing uh let's say you have a data scientist and you're not very 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 lucky very rarely you'll find such a project in which you get very good uh, use cases in a month maybe one or two day only you'll be training a model model training does not happen for your whole life cycle it's just a very small fraction of it so what really happens in an industry when you go to an industry The first thing is that uh, there are different kind of industries. It can be service based, it can be consultancy, it can be a big tech organization, it can be a banking sector, it can be anything. So let's assume that you are in a service based industry. Easiest to get. What happens inside service based? They have their own uh, products which they have called their internal projects, or else you will be tagged with a particular client. Okay, let's say you are built now working with a client. Now what will happen there? Client. Gives you some work to do. Why will a client outsource something to you? Because it is facing some challenge. There is some problem. So in a legacy application, they will directly say, "Okay, these are certain enhancement. Please go ahead and implement these for me." But in AI, this is not how it works. AI is more of innovation and research. What will happen there is, in a meeting, you might not be involved there. You will have a team hierarchy, or maybe if you get an opportunity, you might be involved. But the whole picture is there will be a meeting in which some business problem will be discussed. Based on that business uh, business problem, there will be a panel of strategists who will try to understand this problem. So this is not for entry level people. This is for a bit senior people, where you understand a problem. Once you understand the problem, you will have to understand on a high level if at all we can help them by any solution. We don't go to the point that I have to use a machine learning, deep learning, and then go back to that. First thing is that can data the data which the client have can I bring some insight out of it? Let's say it is feasible. Then an SOW will be signed up. It's like a contract, and a work comes to you. On a ground level, let's say you are a complete entry level data scientist. What will you be doing? You'll be getting certain data files, and these are not one two files like you are getting in your projects. You will be n number of data repositories. Okay. Uh, very simple use case. If I have to say, चलो ठीक. Let's do this. Uh, let's say uh, you have a credit card. Okay. You are not happy with certain services in your credit card. There is a pretty long queue in the customer service desk. Let's say you have been waiting for thirty, thirty-five, forty minutes, and nobody is answering your call. Okay. Alternative is in today's era, WhatsApp is there. You can put your queries in WhatsApp, or let's say that particular uh, company has their own website, and there also you can go ahead and create a ticket stating this is my problem. I am facing this is difficulty. If you have any attachment, you will upload it, and you have created a problem statement there. Just because you are not able to contact them on call. This is one example. Alternatively, somebody has answered the phone call. What do you do? You say that this is my problem. I'm not able to perform a transaction, or let's say OTP is not coming for my card, or let's say this transaction I have not done unnecessary charges has been given. Any problem which you face, you are set to this person on phone call. What will that person do? If it is very simple, obviously it will get resolved on phone call. But let's say it's a bit complex problem. They will say, okay, I'll take your request. Okay, this is your incident number. Next time, if you call us, then. Please quote this number, and we will tell you the update on it. Or else, they will give you a downtime. Let's say in three to five working days, we will try to come up with a resolution. And what do they do? They are actually filing a report or a problem or an incident for you. Now, this is just you telling this problem. 
in a world of financial industry n number of incidents get raised n number so imagine in a day if 50000 problems have come to a bank is it manually possible that i go ahead and read every problem and i say that okay fine this is the fix of it this is how we can rectify it let's see if this person is telling the truth or not it's a deal. it's not that it's not possible earlier it was used to be done but then the waiting time used to be much high so in this case what can happen is imagine you have got historical data data of last 20 30 40 years where such problems have been cited what has happened after that some level of investigation has happened once those level of investigation has happened certain updates has been done certain documentation has been done or let's say certain images has been appended there and then finally a resolution has been given so this itself a data which you will have to train so right now i put it in a very simple way but in reality you will find such many such databases you will have to figure out which data is important for you which is not relevant for you so the first level of technical thing which you do here is you look at your data you know what is your final target obviously you know the problem of your business and you know your final target with that target and that data you will to start figuring out a pattern intrinsic amount of data engineering will be done you will be creating multiple plots you will be creating charts you will try to do some statistical test maybe you do anova or you are doing p test based on the problem and you will try to set up a ground rule that if something can be built like an analytical solution or not that is the first step which you do nobody says you that please go ahead and perform an hypothesis testing this will not happen you will just get raw data and with that data you will have to explore it and these data are going to be very huge in size now that you have said that okay something can be done next thing which you do on top of it from those let's say you have got 20000 databases out of 20000 databases you thought that 5000 is relevant for me and every database has, has n number of records then you will be combining those things into one master data you will take that master data and then you start treating the data like you're doing it obviously what you're doing you, you will do it there so then you start doing it and then the steps are there feature engineering blah 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 we will not repeat what you know so those are theoretical aspects of ml which you will be applying in real world there in that time frame coming to the next bit which most beginners don't know you know what is feature importance i think so i hope so you know it so you know what is feature importance you know model performance you know hyperparameter tuning you know your precision you know your recall you know your effort score you think that you have got a very good model but the problem there is these are all technical in nature now if this model the business has to accept it you will have to explain them that is why the concept of explainable ai comes in how will you explain that what you are saying or what model you have developed will make sense what is model model is just taking certain numbers and predicting a value i cannot blindly trust a model so how do you incorporate trust on your model so that is where you have to transform that technical bit into a structure in in a verbal way or in a presentation that understand the person in front of you does not know anything about ai so if you go ahead and say that i let's say you have done pca and you say that these are where my eigen values eigen vector he will not understand anything there if you say this is my principal component 01 he will not understand anything there and they will simply reject your solution because they will not trust you so what will you have to do you will you cannot be black box by your model your model has said my recall is 80 that does not mean it's a good model it can fail how will you incorporate trust so very simple way of doing it is take someone who is not technical in nature so people who are from non id background it's a strength i feel that you will have some fears so go don't do it with your client data never ever try to expose them those are confidential data but let's say you are creating a case study or you are working in a hackathon once you have built developed a model now go to a non technical person who does not know any abcd of python who does not know anything of machine learning try to explain them this solution without using any technical word i will not use what is recall i will not use principal components i will not use vectors i will not use this mathematical terms i will speak like a layman so you have to deep down into the business problem so for example if i have to explain that how i say that if a person has logged a report stating that i am not able to log into an application because of server error and let's say your target was identifying what is the root cause it's a very simple problem the way i'm speaking it only it's explainable but the whole idea is you will have to say 
that once i have created a model what i make sure is number one my model is not going to be influenced by one factor let's say i have got one word it does not mean that it will run after that word my model is well versed when i say well versed you can then take analogy take one example one example such as let's say i am preparing for my exam now what did i do i studied one chapter why because i am very very good with my maths teacher now my maths teacher has told me this is a very very important concept let's say it's trigonometry trigonometry is very important and you might get 30 40 question marks of question from this topic only so what will you do practically we all did this we had emphasize more on the topic but that does not mean algebra is not important so you will have to explain that when i say i have trained my model i have made sure that all the important aspects of it has gone into the model it's not that the moment a question of trigonometry comes i will score 90 and if for one reason in a test trigonometry did not come i'll start scoring 30 40 that means it's a bad model so you will have to bring that pictorically that whatever features what are features features are important terminologies or important mechanism in your data which leads to your problem which can explain your problem my model has understood those features so that aspect has to be explained there that okay these were the features if i say feature importance why are they important for that re- relatively you will have to bring certain let's say box plots in which you are showing that if this feature goes high then what is happening historically only in the past we have seen this as happening so this is a trend now we expect that this since this is a trend and it has repeated over a course of time this will happen in the future counter question what if it does not happen not necessary it will happen the counter question also needs to be answered so you will have to be very smart and adaptive there that let's say for some reason my model it's it's a model it will have to make mistake somewhere or the other if it is even making mistake it's not that it will be stupid it will learn from its mistake so the moment that my model makes a mistake how will i know over a course of time i will be tagging that and saying that no this was an error for my model in production so what do i do i retrain that model so i developed another version another portion in the data which will come back 6 months later look at what i predicted what had happened actually i'll again gather those incorrect information i'll pass it back to my model so this is going to be dynamic in nature so this is how you slowly and steadily incorporate trust on your business but this is something which we don't do when we are do, doing certain hands on activity or we apply in hackathon because the moment that hackathon is over and we have received, reached a desired score we are done and dusted but then this is a product which has to be used for multiple years imagine you are buying a phone the phone has a warranty of 1 year and after 1 year if it does not get any software update if it suddenly stops working and there is no support of it will anybody buy that product no imagine a bike or a car there can be n numbers of bike but if you don't have a good service network will you try to go okay if you are a fan of it that's a different thing but practically you will not try to purchase something which is not going to have good after support so how do you incorporate your support and that does not mean that your team has to be there for 10 years and they'll pay you hefty money for 10 years you will have to explain how this model in itself can learn things of its own and only and only where maybe in a situation everything has gone haywire nothing is working out then maybe a refactoring code or a team will be hired but that will happen in the course of future so if your client sees that okay if i invest n number of money today and i can make a saving in a course of 5 to 6 years nobody can recover their money immediately the client also does not expect it it's similar if you take up a course you are paying something we should not expect that in next month that i'll get a return on my investment the return on investment comes over a period of time take mutual funds you have invested in sip in first month you still don't start getting profit from next month keep it there for 3 4 years and then you start realizing your profit so like you are invested in your career you have to explain this to your client how they need to be invested in that model how it's a journey so how do you explain it how do you make it trustworthy how do you explain that no bias is there how do you explain there is no partiality there is no racism in your model these things are very very important and then there is another aspect of it that is deployment it's a bit more technical let's not go there but overall this is where as a data scientist it's necessary that you can do it might not be you are interacting with the client but even if a manager is doing it and your manager is not from a technical background then you will have to explain these things to your manager so that they can convey it ahead so some organizations you might get an exposure where you are in a client facing role somewhere you will have an hierarchy where you might not be getting that role but the whole idea is at a ground level you should know it and the more and more you get to work with real data the more plethora of knowledge and exposure you will get so that 10 years later you can call yes now i am a subject matter expert it takes time 
so that is how i say theoretical ai is very very different from practical ai as i said the modeling part is a very very small fraction of it before it and after it there are many activities which you have to do i hope that you got, were able to understand there were not too many jargon which i used uh should be so if i were to pick up a few things from whatever you said first is um understanding of the business problem is important yes very very right? important so just yes. understanding the technology no know, knowing how to write code and syntaxes and python or sql or whatever doesn't do understanding right. the business problem itself is very very important right, right. so that right. is something that learners can start practicing from now itself when they work on projects right yes. so six months when you when um, all of you work on multiple projects don't directly jump into solving the problem exactly. spend some time understanding the problem itself right like you said right. in the real world you don't actually start um, you know deciding these are the technologies to be used you first figure out whether the problem can be solved in a certain way or not yes yes so that is very important um that is first thing second thing is having a you know you can't you can't directly start coding unless you know how to clean up your data how to arrange your and organize your data so those fundamentals are very very important especially for somebody who is trying to get an entry into the data sciences industry now is that right i am mean, correct can... correct actually i'll add something there this is one thing which i've seen many even in our organization also there are many beginners who are there uh, the common thing which is taught in platforms is let's say there is a simple concept of missing value so what do you do fill na zero or central tendency value mean median mode depending on situation outliers blah blah not necessary that will work everywhere okay imagine you are working in a in a pharmaceutical industry okay and there you don't even know what are those parameters so these will be encoded data it or maybe in a banking industry their data itself has been encrypted in such a way that you itself should not know what is the features because that's privacy for them so they will not want you to know it so simply using basic skills everywhere does not help you have to understand what type of problem i am dealing with so if it is a very sensitive information then maybe to fill even missing values you will have to create a different model model which will look at similarities around your features and then try to bring that in so that is also a decision which you have to take on the kind of data you have don't simply say that okay these are some basic things which work no filling missing values with zero or mean median mode hardly works to be honest because there you have to relate with your problem and then decide how do i treat it so basically your model will learn what you fit into okay imagine you are cooking food if you are trying to make a spicy dish and you don't add spice as it can never be spicy in nature you might think that i've cooked it in a low flame and i'm wanting it to have give me a very good taste but i don't add spice to it it will not happen so that is what engineering is you have to engineer those things and those will be critical it's not that one solution or one approach will fit every problem solution. everything will be unique you'll have to scratch your head you have to think different ways out how do i do it even when you create your model let's say you have created a model and your model has gone into production but tomorrow when somebody is wanting to use that model few features did not come only and it was always present in the past but in future those data was not present your model will fail in a very bad way in production so you'll also have to account for those things what happens what are those negative scenarios that can come so whenever you even do implement your projects you have your basically test or validation data on which you evaluate a model do this small experiment from your validation data take away 20% of your records and manually go ahead and remove few parameters and then try to test it you will see that your model is failing mm-hmm. so this way you can implement how what if this situation arises tomorrow what will i do there so these things nobody will spoon feed you you will only have to think of different situations and then come up with a solution so it's very very important how do are you, are you engineering your data creating model is very simple trust me anybody can do it but the parts which we do before and after it is where people struggle so if you work on those bits you will excel well i think at some point of time we'll get to a place where models can also be auto generated what cannot be auto generated is the it logic is already there Exactly. exactly you know that that human element element of being able yes. to make that decision taking multiple things into feature i think that is what will actually you know when people ask will ai take away our jobs or will chat gpt take away our jobs if you don't bring in that human element of logic then probably it might and that is the differentiator 
you know that you know that, who are the people who are at risk of actually it will take away jobs and who are those people who are at risk the people who are thinking about it will it take away my job are the first people who will be at risk if you have self confidence and you think that what it's just a tool which some human has created how right. can it replace you you will have to back yourself there don't try even think that ai can ever replace humans it cannot but yes if you are thinking that it can obviously it can so sure. your attitude matters correct so coming back to what we were discussing right and understanding of the business problem is very important having very strong fundamentals in data management is very important the other thing that you brought up was uh being able to explain data right tell that story and uh being able to explain it to somebody who doesn't understand the technical aspect is also very important very very important. and all these things together is what will actually help uh people succeed and grow in this industry so one thing that uh you know we we tell our uh, students also is when a project is given to them um don't just solve it and then be done with it Correct. solve the same problem multiple times in different ways changing the variables you know whatever changes you can so that is when you will be able to compare and contrast uh, different techniques and different results and then you know draw insights from it yourself and this is the kind of skill that companies look for uh, when you people go for interviews right it is not just the code exactly. that you so that was that was uh, very interesting to know um so can you give us some uh, probably a case study through a case study can you help us understand uh, how artificial intelligence is being used it can be any any case study. okay uh fine let's take a very simple problem which i think most people can relate with okay uh, we are aware of cctv footage okay we have cctv cameras across multiple cities let's not take india let's take a western country where it's very well established india is still developing in that phase we don't if is there is might be working or may not be working but that is not the case in western countries so imagine a country or let's say a sector only to make it short has got cctv coverage everywhere okay uh, and let's say this is some kind of uh, policing industry sector, okay so let's say there is a country and it has got a certain uh, police force which is working closely with them now the idea is we want what was what does a police force want police force does not really want to catch criminals the first objective is they want to make the place safer we don't want crime only to happen in the first place obviously if it happens it's a responsibility of both the citizens over there as well as the law enforcement agencies to put them in justice but the first primary motive should always be that we minimize crime itself now i have put certain things in a piece of paper or a plate here so footages crime law enforcement agents now think how can this be leveraged to bring a solution such that tomorrow it can help me reduce crime in a very simple way you have those footages now with that footage is what can you really do right. think of different i'm not just talking about one use case this scenario will have n number of use cases simple way i can do facial recognition from those videos what will i do with facial recognition if it's a police law enforcement agency is there they will always have a database what will have they have in those databases they will have images of people who were convicted in the past so obviously even just think like a human first that if you are a officer and a crime is occurring in a place what will i really do first ground will be obviously one investigation team will be there then lily i'll also try to join those dots who were the past offenders there it may be a new offender but what if it is someone in the past is there any pattern do i have any case file as such this is what a human officer will do exactly the same thing if i want to save that time for a law enforcement agency i probably have to create a technology or a tool there which can do the same thing for me so this is one piece for you one string the next one now ideally when a crime happens it's not that suddenly i'm sleeping next moment i open my eye crime is up no it will have a setup even if somebody is going to fire someone before that the person has to come to that place will take out a gun will point at the person and then shoot so there is a delay so such people will have certain suspicious activities so when they have suspicious activities those can be monitored because these are live footage is coming in how do we implement it don't try to go there people may know it may not know it but understand it what can be done this is what we say feasibility if it is possible so if i have let's say a video live footage what is video video is nothing but compilation of n number of images so i am not sure if you are aware of or not 
but from every video i can bring it down to multiple images so if i have a very very strong model which in real time right from the moment somebody is taking maybe looking here and there maybe is looking suspicious can trigger an alarm what will happen then an alarm will be raised to the patrolling officers don't try to relate it with india and outside we have patrolling officers so maybe before even a crime happens if somebody hears this siren the person might step back again these are all might these are all probabilities there is no guarantee it will help but it reduces the risk parallelly the third case now let's say some crime has already happened okay uh, let's say there is a robbery at your place what will you do you will go to a uh, nearby station you will go ahead and file your fir in that process there is a mental state of trauma which will be there you might miss out certain key events you might be perplexed when you see so many officers around you or you might see some offender over there you may be afraid what if instead of that you have a mobile application there itself you can feed in whatever has happened you can click some real time images and upload it there and automatically your fir has been launched so what are these things these things is it there in india it's not there so this is a use case for you so when we talk about case studies or use cases this is exactly how it happens nobody comes and tell you look buddy this is my problem please do a solution for me this way innovative solution or research i'm talking specifically in the industry of research you will have to cite out these problems and when you cite out these problems what could also be a possible solution so you might not do, do the technical bit of it it's always a team job you might come up with some very very brilliant ideas with those ideas i'll have to lay down an approach so let's say i want to lay down an architecture in which i want to create an fir in real time where i can reduce this downtime by 30 minutes what will i need i need a team who can create a good mobile software as well as a web application i'll need a designer who can put it what are the fields how will they do it exactly what is there in a police form put everything there you have a manual paper form you have a format structure you know the structure make it digital once that has gone digital next thing what will you need you will need a database that is already already there. it's basically the law enforcement team will have the database so your input will have to be integrated with the data this is the next job which is there after that what is needed next bit is place holders where you can upload images or videos where you can write description now once these things are done it does not mean that the story is over here instead of a police officer opening up the application seeing okay a crime has been reported let's go ahead and file a team now what next can be done what can be done here is create a tool a model this is going to be a language based model which will understand what is your concern what has happened then what will that model do it will try to understand it and look in the past if something like this has happened which team usually gets assigned to it so it will automatically use nlp and machine learning to assign it to a team so what will happen in that team only they will get a pop up notification and what will they do okay a case has been assigned at this area a zip code will be given they will simply rush so the moment you piled it up in a matter of 2 seconds a team has now started left there and is now coming to your place so imagine how much downtime has been reduced there what else can be done let's say there is a travel time of 30 minutes in this 30 minutes no investigation can happen but ai can do some level of investigation it's called the ground work what will be those groundwork if something like this has happened in the past is this something like a serial chain of event which has happened did in recent few days su such a report has come if something has happened who were the possible suspects there if it's a burglary if if somebody has robbed you then after robbing they'll have to sell it somewhere so that they can earn that money so usually where what is the market area where these things get sold who are those people another team can be dispatched to that space so in a span of 30 minutes where actually in real time you would have rather gone to a station or called up someone and explain the situation already you are 6 to 8 hours ahead of time and that is going to affect the offenders because they were not prepared for it by right? because it's not that they'll go to a place and they can simply sell it off they can be ambushed what are the possible exit routes which they are going to take send another team there so entire thing can be well organized given you have that innovative solution things so this exactly is a small case study which can be done there can be n number of angles there if we go there we might be building a solution here but then the whole idea is i just took an example of public safety you can take up any industry 
look at the pain point. What is there in this industry? What is a problem? What solution we don't have? Might be this present outside. What I'm speaking right now, 30, 40 percent is probably there in Dubai. Dubai is pretty advanced there. But then what is not there in India is not there in India. So you could probably work towards helping our own government. That is something which you can do as a learner. When you work in an organization, these case studies will automatically come. No, not case studies, rather these problems will come to you because these are going to be a client problems for me. I am not allowed to speak about my client problems. So that bit which experience will I will not be sharing. But then some prototypes or some innovative work which we have, might have done in the past, I can speak about it. So this is one example which I put in front of you. Right. Great. I mean, it's such an it's such an exciting industry to be with and such an exciting time to be in this industry. Uh, we've almost come to the end of the session, but yeah. I think it was a lot of input. What I would request um, all the participants, audience today, um, you know, I, I keep doing these Odin Talks almost every week. And I, uh, you know, there is so much information that has come out of this session I think you will have to go back to the recording one or two times and listen to it again to actually extract the full meaning out of it. Um, you know, the full sense out of it. I, I mean, I, that much of information has been shared. Very, very valuable information. Saurabh, thank you so much. Um, the recording of the session is going to be available on the LMS soon. Uh, so whenever you have time, please go back and watch the session again because... Usually what I do sort of is I kind of summarize the discussion in, you know, five, six mm. points. But now I'm intentionally not doing that because there are more than I can even count. Actually, I kept it open ended to be honest. I really did not want it to be like an abstract where I speak something and you think this is what it is. What happens when you speak this way is that once where I've ended, there are actually seven to ten more possibilities. Correct. This is a platform which you can think about it. What can yeah. be done there? Exactly. So, so Data science is not about technical thing. You have to bring in that culture where you start using your brain and start thinking different angles out of it. So that thing also you have to parallelly develop. Correct. So what you have actually done sort of is managed to kind of open up the minds, uh, open up the perspectives of all of us. And we will need to go back to the session and watch it again to actually, uh, you know, every, every suggestion that was made, every case study that was discussed, every example that was discussed can itself be, uh, you know, a problem statement that everybody can work on. So thank you so much for being here. We'll keep coming back to you for more um, sessions like yeah. this. And uh, thank you so much. That's it from us. Uh, Jayanti, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Shruti, and uh, thank you so much, Mr. Saurabh. That's really a great session. Indeed, interesting for me as well behind the camera. Uh, so thank you so much for being here and uh, giving us the time today. The response is also really great. Uh, so yeah, that's all we have for today. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Also coming um, to the feedback, guys, from wherever you have joined the Odin Talk session, you'd be having your feedback. All right, kindly go back and give your feedback about how the session was throughout and if you have any suggestions you can definitely write down the suggestions as well all right as usual nine and ten are considered to be satisfactory and anything below nine means uh, you are expecting something then you can uh, write your comments all right and uh, also as shruti mentioned the session recording would be available on your lms you can go back and uh, definitely check your LMS for the recording. All right. You definitely need it if I'm not wrong. So whenever you're in doubt, please go back and watch this recording. This will definitely help you to find your way out. Right. So yeah, once again, thank you so much, uh, Saurabh. And uh, thank you, Shruti. We are good to go with this. Uh, see you all soon. Thank, thank you. you all. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.